For those who don't know, Luka Doncic just scored the fourth most points in an NBA game. Tied with Wilt Chamberlain, who did it twice. Number one goes to Wilt Chamberlain at 100. Number two was 81 from Kobe. Number three from 78. And number four is Luka fucking Doncic. That is absolutely insane. Um, if this get, gets clipped up for YouTube, like I, like I was just saying earlier, um, this comes nights after Joel Embiid dropped 70 himself, after Cat was on pace for 70 himself, um, until he choked that shit up. Um, in a night as well, even for Luka Doncic, where Devin Booker, where Devin Booker was on pace for 70. Um, is there a scoring problem in the league? I ain't gonna lie, at this point, fuck the conversations. Let's just enjoy the basketball, right? Oh, Trey Young for three. Nani? 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 Oh, they gotta foul Luka. They gotta foul Luka. Oh, they don't They don't wanna foul Luka? Oh, that's some whole ass shit. They didn't wanna foul Luka just cause they didn't wanna... Nah, chat. Nah, the Hawks are some hoes, chat. Nah, nah, chat. Nah, chat. Nah, chat. The Hawks are some hoes. It was a three-point game. They needed to foul, and they wouldn't foul Luka because they didn't want him to go up even more. Nah, that's some... Yo, that's some hating ass shit. For the YouTube side of the game, we're, we're still watching the game live, bro. No. <laughs> no, no. Fuck the... Yo. That is, that is insane. That is insane. But yeah, so, so it, it, it ponders the question of if there is a scoring problem. But I'm not going to lie, man. Sometimes... You just got to stop having the conversations for a couple days and just enjoy basketball. We are seeing all-time great offensive players play at all-time great offensive scales right now. Shout out to Joel Embiid, averaging 36 this season. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> shout, out, shout, out, shout out to Joel Embiid, averaging 36 this season. In my opinion, I took, I took James Harden's 36-point-per-game season for granted. Um, I'm not taking that for granted this season. Even after all the MVP narratives and talks, Joel Embiid is going fucking insane. I don't give a fuck about that narrative. I don't, I don't give a fuck about that conversation, best in the world conversation, MVP conversation. Point, fact is, Embiid is going crazy. You got guys like SGA going crazy. Luka going crazy. Um, you know, Tyrese going crazy. All of these dudes going crazy. Um, so yeah, sometimes you just got to enjoy basketball, man. Listen, man, hindsight is twenty twenty, but looking back, I probably should have made an entry today on Prize Picks, the proud sponsors of this video. Prize Picks is my personal favorite way to play daily fantasy sports, and I think it should be y'all's as well. All you got to do is download their app or go on their website and sign up for an account. Once you go on their website, they got a bunch of different sports up top, but because we're NBA heads, we're going to stick with the NBA. Tomorrow, we got a banger game. The Washington Wizards versus the Detroit Pistons. I don't know, man. I feel like somehow, someway, Kuz is still going to sell on 23 and a half points. So, um, yeah, we're going to go with the less on Kuz right here. And then we got the Nuggets facing the Sixers. Didn't they just recently play? That's that's kind of surprising. I feel like MPJ is going to have a really good game tomorrow. So, I'm going to go with the more on 16 and a half points right here. And because it's a Red Goblin, I believe the multiplier actually goes up. So, that's fantastic. Um, I'm going to put down $10 for this entry right here. And boom, that is how you place an entry. And if you want to try out the code for yourself, you can use code SLZ to get up to $100 match on your first deposit. So if you put in $100, they will give you $100, and now you got $200 to work with. Links will be in the description for all of that. And shout out to Prize Picks for being the sponsor of this video, man. Sometimes you just got to enjoy basketball. Um, people want to make everything so much about conversations when sometimes you just got to enjoy what you're seeing right in front of you, man. We don't have to have these all-time discussions of how good is he for real? How good is he for real? Maybe down the line, but it doesn't have to happen immediately. You know what I'm saying? Um, yes, it's, it's absolutely insane what we're seeing in the NBA so far. But is there a scoring problem? I personally... To say it's a problem means it's detrimental to the game, right? Um, and seeing these high-scoring games from an individual perspective... Um, I don't think it's ever going to be a problem. I don't think it's fucking up records and things of that nature because historically speaking, you've always had to put shit into co proper context anyways, right? 
You've always had to do that. Always, always, always. Um, there's a reason why we look at player A and player B stats and add context to it. So, <clears throat> this idea that it's just fucking up records. Certain things have fucked up records in the past. Like the number of teams um, in the NBA in the 60s. You know, that gave those players an edge to win even more. The game just ended. Shout out to Luka for the 70 ball, man. Um, but yeah, those those players got an edge to win more championships, get back to the finals even more. There was less competition, so it was easier to get these awards. Um, what should we call it? In, <clears throat> in the 80s as well. Um, and in the 70s, there was very high-paced basketball going around. Um, so stats were inflated, which I'm going to be honest. I don't even think they're inflated. I think if you look at the history of the game, the nineties and the two thousands are the outlier seasons, um, the outlier decades. And just for a majority of, of basketball's history, it has been a high paced game. You know what I'm saying? So regardless, you always have to put stats into context anyways. So I don't think there's anything different with this era, but, um, shout out to JJ Reddick, um, who I saw, Make a clip about this recently. What a, like, there's a lot of rules today that are actually in favor of the defense compared to what it once was. Um, especially compared to what it was 20 years ago. The fact that you can even just play zone defense, you know, is, is, a, is a change. Um, and he brought up a bunch of rules that, again, just says defense... <coughs> This, th there are, they, uh, excuse me, the NBA has implemented certain changes that, if anything, have, have made it harder for offensive players to do their thing. But offenses are just so talented nowadays that they are still putting up these numbers. And I do think it is a combination of actual skill being better nowadays and just the name of the game being what the name of the game is. Um, the name of the game is threes. The name of the game is spreading out the floor. And it makes sense because if you don't spread out the floor and you go against the, the status quo, you are viewed as a team that does not have enough uh, floor spacing. And um, teams can easily expose that nowadays. You look at the Los Angeles Lakers, and um, that's, that's the case for the Lakers, right? Their lack of floor spacing is a big reason as to why they're not winning games on top of other shit. But... Their lack of floor spacing is why they've been losing games. So if you don't play the way the game is supposed to be played, you'll be behind the curve and lose games. Um, so I think what we're seeing right now, I don't think it's ruined the game. I think this is just the natural progression of the game. It is the norm. It is what it was always going to end up being. Someone was going to find out that, yo, man, six foot five, six foot six. Um, players can do exactly what six foot guards can do um, and be more versatile defensively and give you more um, lineup flexibility. Someone was going to figure out that, yo, sensors do not just have to be paint presences and they can handle the ball, they can pass the ball, they can shoot the ball and score off the dribble. These findings were going to happen at some point, somehow, some way. It, it's just a matter of who was going to do it. Same thing with the three point shot. Same thing with the three-point shot. Someone was going to figure out that, yo, <clears throat> the most efficient way to score a bas um the most efficient way to score in basketball is through the three. Is through the three, mathematically speaking. And it probably is going to be a nerd who, who actually figures that out. But it is what it is. Shout out to the nerds. Shout out to the nerds, right? Um, but yeah, ultimately, I don't think there's a scoring problem in the league um, but I do have, I, I, I see where the criticism is coming from because, you know, when you watch games, everything, every possession seems like a three, right? Oh my God. Everyone's just shooting threes, but I would love to see y'all watch nineties basketball because it is just the same thing, but a different shot. Me and Sage watched the 1998 NBA finals with Rusty and damn near every single possession was just some sort of post up. It was just some sort of dump off. There was not there there really was not much dynamic offense being ran. Right? So, yeah, everyone was just dumping it into the post, bro. Everyone was just dumping it into the post. And even if you watch 60s basketball, bro, 
they would take shots like seven seconds into the shot clock for no reason. Or I don't even think there was a shot clock back then. Just watch a game from the 60s. It is so fast paced. It makes it makes no sense. It makes no sense, dog. <laughs> like, <laughs> like why why are you rushing? Like that ass. Why the fuck are you rushing? So this idea that it's exclusive to this era, I think is 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 a misjudgment. Um, every single era in NBA history have had certain play styles that have been prevalent for every single team, and there is repetitiveness within the game and how the game is played. There's nothing different about today's game. It's just it's just jarring because. You know, 50 points used to mean something for a lot of people growing up. Because a lot of the people talking about the game right now grow, grew up in the 90s, grew up in the 2000s in the, in the slower-paced era. 30 used to mean something. A triple-double used to mean something because of the slower pace. But now that it's a faster-paced game, triple-doubles are more common, as much common as they were in the 80s and the and the 60s and the 70s. And people, um, they're just not used to it. They're just not used to it. You know what I'm saying? So, um, ultimately, shout out to Embiid. Shout out to Luka. Um, shout out to D-Book. Shout out to, um, shout out to Cat at this point. Shout out to Dame. Shout out to D-Mitch. Shout out to all these dudes. Does he not reach out? Yeah, I do reach out. I do reach out. 